but an off week and so on and so forth. All right, there we go. And let's play the music. Tri City Sports Now, where usually we talk to Jerry Bonkowski one o'clock on Monday, one o'clock on Friday. But because the weather delayed uh, the, what was the Firekeepers Casino 400 up in Michigan by a day, well, we'll talk to Jerry today instead here at one about what happened. And, uh, well, Joey Logano, hey, the defending cup champ, uh, beating Kurt Busch, not Kyle this time. And really, it was the dominant car. I mean, you had the caution with two laps left, and you thought, hey, maybe now Logano can be overtaken, but he uh, held on to win the race, really by two car lengths, uh, dramatic fashion and all this. And just, uh, you know, after, do you think that Logano is appreciated enough? Jerry Bonkowski of NBCSports.com and Sirius, I ask this because I know that when he won the playoff last year, it was sort of like, wait a minute, why is Logano winning this? Why isn't it Bush or Harvick or Truex and all this? Do you, do you think because of that maybe we aren't appreciating Logano this season and really how dominant he was in Michigan? Well, you know, that's a difficult question to answer because, you know, Logano has been on the scene. It's hard for people to even realize that he's been on the scene for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's only, what, 27, 28 years old. But, you know, he's, you know, he's been with two of the most uh, successful teams there are in, uh, in NASCAR. You go get races for the first several years, and he can go and keep Penske. And, you know, he's really come into his own uh, on the Penske side of things as well. So, you know, I've always felt, and this is my opinion, I've always felt he's been a little underrated. Even with the championship last year, I still feel that Joey is underrated. I think that, you know, he's going to need to win at least another one or two more championships before some fans really start giving it his due. Now, myself, most of my fellow media uh, cohorts, we already give him his due. I mean, he's a champion. You have to get that respect, that, you know, that credibility. You, know, you have to uh, you know, uh, honor him for what he's done and the accomplishments he's achieved. But there are still a lot of fans out there that just, you know, for whatever reason, seem not to give him the respect that a, a guy like a Kyle Busch or a Truex or a Harvick garner. But I think that will come in time, though. Uh, we're talking to Jerry Bonkowski of NBCSports.com. Uh, it's kind of now the one guy that I really came up with uh, being impressed by. I mean, you know, I say maybe Logano doesn't get quite the respect that he should, but uh, Kurt Busch, he is kind of in the shadow of Kyle. Let's face it, he's Eli to Peyton, that sort of thing. And there was a chance that he was going to win that race at the end, and he finishes second instead of uh, fifth. What was your thoughts on uh, Bush's run in Michigan? Well, I think, you know, I, I just, I've said several times already this year on, on your show, Marky, um, you know, I still think uh, Kurt is a win waiting to happen, and I think he actually is a, several wins waiting to happen. And, you know, what he did in Michigan just uh, further illustrates that, that he can win. I mean, you know, if, if we had maybe another couple of laps, he might have been able to overtake Joey Logano. You never know. So I still think there's a lot of good things ahead of Kurt Busch this season. I think he'll definitely make the playoffs no question about it. Certainly would help if he gets a win at least. And I think that, you know, once the playoffs roll around here 11 uh, races from now, I think that Kurt Busch will have at least one, maybe two wins under his belt going into that 10-race playoff. 11 races from now we have the play. I know, it just seems to me like... Boy, then we just start this thing. I guess that's when you're having a good season or when you're enjoying it. That's the situation right there. I mean, I guess you get to what there are, you know, there are a hundred. It seems like baseball just started and all this. We're only 20 games away from the halfway point of the year. Really? I mean, you know, that sort of thing right now. Uh, hey, you know, last time we were on there, we talked about the aerodynamics of the car and the spoiler, and how, you know, Kyle Busch didn't really like it because it was more difficult to pass, in his opinion, and such. Uh, but I want to ask and go and revisit that because the thoughts are now with the reduction of uh, horsepower, 550 instead of 750. What are your thoughts on that? I've been saying that for years, that NASCAR should go in that direction, and they finally did. I mean, I've been saying that probably for the last 15 years, that, you know, uh, to me, the 750 horsepower engine at some tracks, in my opinion, overpowers the track. 550 to me is a perfect compromise. It gets the the, the you know the fields are tighter, are bunched tighter together. Uh, there's more competitive or you know, competition. There's more equality. There's more parity. I think NASCAR really you know uh, hit the bonus, uh, if you will, 
okay, I understand it helps, you know, keep the cars in the pack and all that, but the flip side would be, shouldn't uh, the cars be, you know, equipped to have as much power as possible? Isn't that the appeal of auto racing? And, uh, uh, and, of course, NHRA comes to Bristol this weekend. I want to talk to you a little bit about that here, Jerry Bonkowski. Uh, as NASCAR takes a week off, there you go, for Father's Day and such. Uh, but anyway, Jerry Bonkowski, I, I did want to ask this about Michigan. I mean, I was reading a lot of stories about how this race, this track, you know, because it is Michigan, because that's traditionally where, you know, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, you know, their headquarters are all about and all this, and that, you know, all the Ford officials, they come to Michigan and all that. Is this race actually just a little bit more uh, important for the technology, let's say, to decide whether we should run at 750 horses or 550 and what the spoiler should be, just because you've got the auto executives, maybe they're more likely to attend this race than another one. Is there any uh, correlation, you think, between uh, the Michigan International Speedway and other tracks? I don't know if I would call it correlation, Marky, because, you know, when you, I mean, it's, by, geographic distance, it's not that Michigan International Speedway is where it is because sure. it's built because of all the you know the significance of the, the Fords, the Chevy, and you know, at the time, the Dodge, the Chrysler, uh, Mercury, the old field, all those cars back then. But I mean, certainly, you know, to have a race in the backyard is important for the American manufacturers to have you know their 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 uh, top executives and you know even just the the guys that work the assembly line to be at the race you know show their support for their particular brand. But then again, you know, you think about, you know, two weeks ago uh, in Michigan at the Belle Isle, IndyCar was there. They had the, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the Honda against the Chevys. And, you know, that was a huge race for the Chevys, you know, for, uh, at Belle Isle, too. So, you know, anytime you're in and or around the Detroit area, Motor City, it's a big thing, no matter if it's IndyCar, if it's any, you know, any, you know NASCAR, uh, I mean, since really the same in NHRA. I mean, the closest NHRA track, I believe, would be... Uh, uh, probably Norwalk, Ohio, up here in a couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, the, the, the point is, though, that it does help get some of the executives out of their offices and go to the racetrack and have a good, you know, enjoyable experience. Now, I, I was looking at, is that why the race was at 5 p.m. and not, you know, sometimes they started at noon? Uh, or 1 p.m. or so. I mean, I can't tell you how many times the rained out races I'm giving highlights of here on the show on a Monday. It, it, w would that be why they put it at night instead of the daytime? Well, first of all, Michigan doesn't have lights. Well, the, well, but, but at 5 p.m., I mean, you'd think, I know that right now we're right at daylight saving, so we have maximum, uh, you know, we have maximum time, but wouldn't that be a, a reason uh, to... Well, I'm just asking. I mean, why 5 p.m. and not 1 or 2 or two or noon? Well, I think a couple of reasons. One, there was weather concerns, uh, you know, earlier in the day. I mean, okay. Overnight, coming night into Monday, you know, there was a lot of concern that they may not even be able to get that race in. So that coupled with the TV window they wanted to have, it, it 
you know, the, lo- the most logical decision was to run it at 5 o'clock. Now, typically, you know, in a, a perfect world, you're not going to see that very often. That's, you know, it was an extreme rarity that it ran that late. Typically, a rain-delayed race, you know, that gets pushed back from a Sunday to a Monday, typically will go off at 11 or 12 noon uh, in most cases. But because, like I said, there was some lingering weather concerns, you know, they had to drive the track. Remember, yeah, this is a two-mile track. It takes a long, long time to drive a track like Michigan. It's a very wide track as well. So, you know, all that kind of thing takes time. <laughs> Excuse me, takes time, and to um, you know get the track in pristine condition, and also not having to worry about any more rain. You basically have to wait. Based on me, I mean, uh, there was some concern. I know you and I talked about this last week. Uh, about, you know, whether or not if the weather was maybe an issue, could this be like it was, you know, back in, what was it, uh, 2006 or seven? I think it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at that race in Michigan where it didn't, it not only was Sunday rain out, Monday was rain out. We didn't race until Tuesday, and even that was a question mark at some point. So, you know, it, 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 I'm glad they got the race in, and, you know, we just go from there then. Talking to Jerry Bonkowski, NBCSports.com. And it's kind of interesting, yeah, the, uh, okay, drying the track and so on and so forth for uh, the start time. I actually did enjoy it because then it was, okay, we'll watch the race. Oh, there's the ending of the race. They're always, in it. and now it's, can I find a baseball game? Can I find, uh, you know, the NBA finals? I mean, I'm, you know, it was really the, okay, we're going to start watching sports all day, you know, and, and kind of a nice matinee, uh, a nice lead in to the uh, stuff that came came outside. Not that I'm really complaining about the start time, but I did find it kind of unusual. Uh, They are not going to be racing this weekend in NASCAR. I'm a bit surprised on that, but it is with uh, Father's Day. I'll ask you about that in our next time that we talk, but you know, there will be racing in Bristol, the NHRA, and uh, you're also, uh, you know, big on NHRA, uh, covering that for NBCSports.com. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, Jeff Birchfield, John City Press last week, he uh, pointed out a rookie driver by the name of Austin Prock and did a feature on him, 10th and points and all that. Is that somebody that maybe we ought to be looking for as somebody who could make a, a lot of noise this weekend, you think, uh, Austin Prock? Well, a couple things about Austin. Number one, father is Jimmy Prock, one of the best well-known and most successful crew chiefs in the game today. Number two, Austin and Jimmy both obviously work for John Force, so that's another big thing that you, know, you get to keep your eye on, on Austin. Uh, you know, he's a young kid; he's got a, ten, a tremendous amount of potential and a tremendous amount of talent. And you know, he, he just needs to get that first big win, and I think then you know the success will definitely follow. I mean, he's had some good runs up to now, but you know, because of the rookie and experience and, and things like that. You know, it's not easy for a young man of, what is he, 23 or 25, whatever he is, you know, to go up against guys like an Antron Brown or, you know, a, a Doug Colito or somebody like that, you know, in the in top fuel and, you know, try to be successful. You know, it's going to take time. He's going to have to earn his stripes. He's going to have to earn his spurs, if you will. But I think once he does, you know, Austin Proc is a name we're going to be talking about for a long, long time to come. Of course, there's, it seems to me there's been one name in NHRA, and you know it as Steve Torrance on five straight victories and all this. Right. You know, I think I asked you this before, but let me just ask you it again. I mean, he wins in Topeka this week. What is it? Why is this guy winning in a Top Fuel series every week? Well, you know, that is a question that no one can uh, explain. Now, obviously, the Torrance family has some uh, secret that they're not going to share with anybody else with but, you know, what I, what I really am probably most impressed about, Marky, is that not only is Steve a, you know, tremendous, tremendous driver, he's doing it with essentially one and a half cars. And what I mean by that is, hmm. you know, when you have a multi-car team, you have the opportunity to get more data, more testing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Steve Torrance and the Capco guys, they are the only full-time uh, team in that organization. Now, his father, Billy Torrance, races about a half a season. So, you know, he does maybe 12, 14 races, whatever it is. In fact, Steve defeated his father in the final round this past weekend in Topeka to get that win. It's fifth win in a row. But the point is that, you know, they are getting some data from Billy's car when it runs, but for the most part, they're doing their own thing, uh, you know, with what 
what they got, the, the notebook they compiled, what they did last year, you know, what's going on with the track, you know, what the competitors are doing. I mean, they have got their game down to an absolute science. And, you know, five in a row right now, I'm not going to be surprised to see uh, Steve go on to win at Norwalk. I mean, at uh, Thunder Valley this weekend, I'm not going to be surprised to see him win at Norwalk in a couple of weeks. I'm not going to be surprised to see him win in New Hampshire. I mean, this guy, you know, I would not be surprised. We're through, uh, what is this? Uh, I think we've gone through 10 of the first 24 races in the NHRA schedule. He's got five wins already. I would not be surprised to see Steve Torrance end this season with 14 or 15 wins. That's hmm. a tremendous amount of wins to do, but he can do it. If anybody can do it, he can do it. You know, it's... It's like a tie. It's like, you know, to come to Bristol. I was there when we saw Steve Torrance really dominating the sport. And maybe it's not like, I don't know, when I can remember 20 years ago going to see Mark McGuire when he was chasing uh, Roger Maris at Three River State. Right. You know, I mean, it, and that was, we had to go to see that that was, you knew you uh, uh a, a event, and, and a, you were watching American sports history at that time, had to go see him uh, have that record. I think for motorsports fans, you know, Steve Torrance here on this winning streak, you're starting to look at who's got the longest winning streak, what's been the most dominant, you know, it's like that. This is some sort of record-setting season, something that you want, want to say. I saw Steve Torrance in Bristol during his streak back in 2019. Oh, really? Right. What was that like? You know, just like, I guess I now I'm probably going to have to tell people what it was like to watch Mark McGuire hit his home runs back in the day and such. Hey, uh, we know what Jerry Bonkowski is like. Can you talk uh, drag racing here 1 o'clock on Monday night, uh, or 1 o'clock on Friday this week? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, let's do it. Let's have a little bit different. We'll talk NHRA with Jerry Bonkowski at 1 on Friday. And we'll come back. Mayor McGuire, I got a lot of stuff here. Hey, Graham Clark is back into coaching. We've got to talk about that when we come back on Tri City Sports Now. So, you know.